Our greatest gift as a species is not our body. We're not the fastest, we're not the strongest. Our body hardly distinguishes itself in any way in the animal kingdom. Our greatest sort of gift in the tree of life is our mind. Maybe it is we who are imprisoned, thinking our body matters, when in fact at the end of the day, it's really all about your thoughts, all about your dreams, all about how we react to our life experience in this world and share it with others. If you could make a phone call to the 20-year-old Neil deGrasse Tyson mm -hmm. and give that young man a bit of advice, mm -hmm. what would you tell him? I wouldn't give any advice at all because the act of being 20 is itself part of what it is to become who you are. If you start siphoning information from the future, you, the act of having learned it firsthand by experiencing it is what made me the person who would put me in a position to call the 20-year-old and say, here's the advice. The act of learning by life experience has sufficient value that to just have someone tell you what you should or shouldn't do is not what makes you who and what you are. Who and what you are is what you do and what you learn from what you did. Yeah, you can tell somebody something, but if they don't think it's true, it's, it'll fall on deaf ears. Let them find out. And the act of finding out is the lesson, not the lesson itself. So there is nothing I can tell myself at any time in life because I am learning what it is to be alive. I'm learning what it is to become a scientist. I'm learning what it is when people treat me one way or another because they presume I should be an athlete rather than a scientist. That's life experience that feeds what I am today. Even if I'm steeped in ignorance at some point in my life and then that gets figured out because I visit someplace or I read a book. It's life experience. You can't just tell someone that. The immigrant who comes to America, they come to America with not a penny to their name, and they work hard and they, they start a business and, and they finally get actually wealthy. And they struggled and they knew the meaning of a dollar and they and so then they have a family. And they say to themselves, I, I will never have my kids experience the poverty that I have, or the hunger, or not knowing where the next meal, that will not happen with my kids. So the kids have everything provided for them. And then they become deadbeats. Then the parent says, where did I go wrong? I gave you everything I didn't have. It's the fact that you started with nothing gave you the work ethic to become who you are. So to turn around and say, now I'm gonna change all that for my kids? Of course, you, no, you don't want your kids to go hungry so they become somebody like you. But just don't presume that your latter day knowledge, your latter day wealth, if introduced into a next generation as advice or as a handout, will create the person that you are. In fact, it can circumvent it. It can derail that pathway. I think the greatest of people that have ever been in society, they were never versions of someone else. They were themselves. You don't think about Michael Jordan, the basketball player, and say, oh, he was just like this other player. No, it's Michael Jordan. I think the greatest of people in society carved niches that represented the unique expression of their combination of time. And if everyone had the luxury of expressing the unique combination of talents in this world, 
our society would be transformed overnight.